technology is amazing. With the aid of technology, people these days are able to live richer, more fulfilling lives than ever before. At least that might be what you've heard from thought leaders, scientists, or people like Bill Gates. You know, the type of people that want to make the world a better place. Because according to them, technology is going to solve all of the world's problems. We're all going to have our very own AI waifu and a universal basic income. And we'll basically be living in this tech utopia where everything is perfect. But it's getting harder and harder to believe for most people because things like stress, depression, and feelings of purposelessness are at an all-time high in our society. And I think that everyone these days is at least somewhat aware of the dangers of technology and of modern society, whether it's the addictive slavery of social media algorithms, the loneliness and isolation of life in the big city, the destruction of the environment by giant corporations. It's hard to ignore the fact that all of this progress comes at a cost. And so if modern life and the wonders of technology are so great, then why doesn't it really feel like that? So one of the best critiques of modern society and the implications of technology on society is from the essay Industrial Society and Its Future by Ted Kaczynski. So I recently reread this book and in this video I'm going to do kind of a book review. I'm going to cover in my opinion the most interesting parts of the books and how we can also apply the themes from this book into our own lives. So the book opens with the line, the Industrial Revolution and its consequences have been a disaster for the human race. But what exactly is the problem with post-industrial society? So in modern day society, humans now enjoy levels of material wealth and comfort that someone living just 100 years ago couldn't imagine. You probably heard someone say that even the kings of old didn't have it as good as the average person does now. But at the same time, something feels very wrong because society's mental health has never been worse. People are more unfulfilled and disillusioned with the whole system now than ever before. And so it seems like the world around us has become more comfortable, but the suffering that we experience is now psychological instead of physical. So how exactly did that happen? So as an example, let's take a primitive hunter-gatherer. In comparison to now, he lived a much less comfortable life and he has to work hard just for basics like food and shelter, and he's always at the mercy of nature. But in order to overcome these obstacles, he has to use his skills and intelligence to overcome nature around him and take control of the world around him. And maybe eventually over time, through hard work and effort, him and his family can reach their goals of having adequate food, shelter, and community, but only with great effort. And maybe he's even able to affect change around him within his small community. Now, let's compare this to a modern-day adult living in his parents' basement, doing nothing but playing video games all day. And so, in comparison to this primitive hunter-gatherer, his life is much more comfortable and safe. But without any real goals and no real power over the world around him, most people would be correct in assuming that this would be a pretty miserable life to live. Now, you might prefer this life over living in the wilderness, but I think most people would agree that the primitive hunter-gatherer's life would be much more fulfilling. So Kaczynski argues in this book that humans have three categories of goals that they wish to achieve. So the first category are goals that require minimal effort to achieve. The second category are goals that require significant effort to achieve. And the third are goals that are impossible to achieve no matter the effort. And Kaczynski argues that goals that give real meaning and fulfillment in life fall into the second category. So, goals that require significant effort to achieve. The problem with modern society is that everything we do is either way too easy or completely impossible. Because these days, getting the basics like food or shelter is trivially easy. All that you really need is a basic level of competence and you are able to get a job. Probably the most important trait needed to get a job is obedience. All you really need to do is keep your head down, follow the system, do what is told of you, and you'll probably have a pretty easy time at least obtaining the basics like food and shelter. So things like that are way too easy, but at the same time, most other things in life are completely out of our control. So if you don't like all of the pollution caused by giant corporations, or the fact that we basically have no privacy now thanks to governments and corporations, well, this is completely out of the control of the average individual. And of course, this can contribute to the feeling of powerlessness that a lot of people in modern society have. So one of the biggest recent examples would probably be the pandemic. 
So whether you approved or disapproved of your government's handling of the situation, it was completely out of your control. And this was a pretty major part of almost everyone's lives that you had absolutely no control over. So like it or not, there was nothing you could do about it. And so you can see how this lack of control over your own life can lead to feelings of powerlessness and eventually maybe even depression that can arise from not being able to do anything or have a say in anything. Basically, all of the big decisions these days are made by just a few elites, and you just have to go along with whatever they say. And Kaczynski argues that in order to feel fulfillment and real happiness in life, you need to have enough Category 2 goals. So goals that can only be achieved with great effort. Because all of the great stories of old and movies you see are all about the human triumph over difficult tasks. Imagine if you were watching an epic movie and things were so easy for the main characters that the movie just wrapped up in five minutes. Or maybe things were so difficult for them that in the end it was just impossible and they failed. It's not a very satisfying movie, right? But these days there aren't that many goals left that can only be achieved with great effort. At least not like they used to be, because in primitive times, just getting food and shelter was already a very difficult task. And so just getting the basics essential for survival was enough to provide fulfillment for almost everyone. But these days, most of our goals that require great effort, Kaczynski calls these surrogate activities. So these are things like making some new scientific discovery or playing sports at a very high level. These are things that can only be achieved with great effort. But Kaczynski argues that these are essentially fake goals that society gives us as a replacement for taking away the struggle for our biological needs. So on this channel, I talk about things like Linux and programming all the time. And a lot of people use these as basically hobbies and things that they can use to get fulfillment in their life. Because getting proficient at something like programming does take a lot of effort and time. But do you really think that the hunter-gatherer would feel any great loss from not being able to learn how to program or not being able to install Arch Linux? I don't think he would lose any sleep over it. And so Kaczynski argues that these surrogate activities are basically just a cheap replacement for the kind of goals that we would have in nature. Now, in our modern society, you might think that we have more freedoms than ever before. But technology also restricts freedoms. So as one example, let's take the invention of the car. So when this was first invented, it seemed to give people greater freedom. And before, when it was completely optional to own a car, this was true. So a car back then was almost like a luxury because you could still walk everywhere, but cars just made it easier to get everywhere. But now over time in our modern society, it has become almost impossible to get anywhere without a car because you can't walk places now because they're so spread out. So now almost everyone must own a car. And with all of these quote unquote freedoms, you get your monthly payments on your car. You have to pay insurance. You have to get a license. You have to pay to keep it maintained etc, etc. So it definitely feels like less of a freedom and more like a requirement now. Now you can take something like a bus or a train, but you have even less freedoms with these. Even if you want to walk now, you now have less freedom than you did before because you have to wait at traffic lights. You can only cross the street at specific points. And half of the time you have to avoid getting run over by cars. And this is just one example of many small freedoms that have been taken away from us that really start to add up. There are a lot of other unnatural things that the system tries to force onto us, like forcing people to move away from their families and their small communities to the city so that they can get a good job and make the system even more efficient. And as a result, we are more isolated and alone than ever before, even when living in cities surrounded by millions of people. Now, modern society does a lot to numb the pain. So one of the biggest examples of this is mass entertainment. If you don't want to think about your life too much, you can binge Netflix shows, you can play video games, or you can scroll endlessly online. And if modern life really starts to get to be too unbearable, you can even be prescribed antidepressants. And the more numb we become, the worse modern society around us is able to become. Because how much less tolerable would society be if we didn't have any distractions and were only left to our own thoughts? And another point that Kaczynski makes is that all of the material wealth we have now around us, most of it is not something that humans really even want or need. It's just artificial wants and needs. The only reason that people actually want these is because of advertising and marketing. Because would you really care about the new iPhone if Apple didn't spend billions of dollars trying to advertise it to you? 
So at the end of the book, the author talks about his solution for how to get rid of these societal ills, and his solution is just to completely dismantle modern society. Now, it's impossible to talk about this book without talking about the context behind it. The author, Theodore Kaczynski, probably better known as the Unabomber, but he was an American domestic terrorist that sent bombs in the mail to people that he thought were advancing technology. So, for example, the president of an airline company, or university computer science or engineering professors. And so he started his mail bombing campaign in 1978, and it killed three people and injured 23 others. And eventually in the 1990s, the author sent letters to several newspapers and said that he would stop the bombings if they agreed to publish his manifesto. And that's how we got to where we are now. That's how we got what we're looking at right now. And eventually he was caught and is now currently serving eight life sentences in prison. And so with a story like that, you would think that the essay that he sent would be the mad ravings of a lunatic. But I actually think that he has a lot of poignant critiques of modern society. And it would be unfair just to dismiss all of this as the ramblings of a crazy person. Now, of course, I definitely don't condone what he did. I think what he did was abhorrent. That should be obvious. And so at the end of the book, he basically talks about his ideas for starting a revolution, violent or otherwise. But basically, he wants to create a bunch of instability in society around him until modern society basically just collapses. Now, I will say that this is the part of the book that I probably disagree the most with because he has kind of this weird, naive idea that we can basically just return to monkey and go back to the way things used to be before all of this technology. And according to him, the perfect society would be something like the hunter-gatherer society that I was talking about before. And he says in the book he knows that things back then were not all sunshine and rainbows. There was more danger from nature, like diseases without modern medicine or dangerous animals. But Kaczynski argues that this is just part of nature and that man can accept these stoically. But with our current issues, they are all man-made, which makes them all the more unjust and unfair because they're completely out of our control. And he also notes that ancient cultures didn't have our same fear of death and pain like we do now. Ancient cultures accepted aging and death as part of the natural course of life, which is far different than our current society's obsession with staying young forever. So in summary, Kaczynski argues that humans can only truly be happy when they are in control of their own life, reliant on their own labor and problem-solving ability instead of the system. Now this probably isn't true of everyone, as there can definitely be some people who are happy just being part of the machine, but I think it can definitely explain a lot of the psychological hang-ups in modern life. So what can we do with this knowledge, assuming that you don't want to be a violent revolutionary or completely dismantle the current system? What are we supposed to do? So I think one of the biggest takeaways from this book is just to give yourself more freedom. And the more freedom that you have in your personal life, the more independent from the system you will be. So as an example, these days, it has never been easier to work for yourself, specifically online. Look, my channel is all about technology, so I'm assuming that a lot of people watching this video already have some kind of profitable skill. I've been a freelance web developer for over five years now, and I'm able to live wherever I want. That's a level of freedom that most people don't have. And I also think that anyone with a reasonable amount of intelligence can at least make some money online. And that kind of freedom gives birth to even more kinds of freedom, so if you have the freedom to live wherever you want, it's easier to find a community, support local businesses, or live closer to your family if those are things that are important to you. The more freedom that you give yourself, the more of the negative effects of modern society you can counteract. Now you can do like some people have done and move into the woods if you want to get completely outside of the system. I do think it is better than modern soulless city living. So I can respect people who do this, but I don't live in the woods. But I can respect people who have their own land or maybe are able to grow some of their own food. You don't have to go full sneed and become a farmer instead of a programmer. But any amount of self-sufficiency is a good thing. I also think it's important to be careful with numbing the pain with entertainment. Of course, I'm not saying that all entertainment is evil. And if you ever play a video game, that means you're just a mindless zombie. But just be careful that you're not using it to numb the pain over living an unnatural life. Like, humans weren't meant to be inside all day on their computers, so go outside and experience real life. Yes, I just summed up this entire book by saying go outside and touch grass, but unironically. 
And of course, there's also the famous self-help axiom to focus less on what you can't control and focus more on what you can. So basically, you don't have to read bad news 24-7 on Twitter in order to be a well-informed person. And I do personally think that a lot of the surrogate activities, like the author describes, are not all bad, but try to make more of them happen in real life. Like for me, I recently started playing recreational sports, and it's so much more fulfilling than playing something like video games, even with imaginary online friends. So those would be my suggestions in order to counteract the negative effects of modern society a little bit. And if I said anything here that sounds interesting, then I would recommend you read the book Industrial Society and Its Future. It's a very quick read, and it's a very different perspective than you will ever hear from the mainstream. So check it out if that sounds interesting. Just don't cite me in any of your manifestos, okay?